Okay, so what I want you to do, Jordan, is I want you to pull focus through the lenses. Okay, just like that? Yeah, like that, but no, this looks amateur and cheap. The background keeps moving. That's terrible. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, this breathes a little bit. I figured you might have a problem with yeah, this. Yeah, that looks so, stupid. Right, let's grab a Fix it. Lens. Fix it now. Okay, there we go. So how about that? Uh, there we go. Okay, now this is better, but I want to be able to crash zoom in on that lens. I just feel uh, like... This is boring. You never and tell if, me this stuff if before we... I don't get to express myself okay, as an see. artist. I'll go grab a zoom lens. Then I won't be able to work under these conditions. All right, now you listen to me. I need you to follow my beat exactly. This is critically important. Are you ready? Yeah, let's just All right. get it done. Okay. Zoom. 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 I didn't say zoom. Oh. Zoom. Zoom. No, okay. This is not working. This is terrible. First off, the focus is changing every single time yeah, you zoom yeah, it. because it's not a par focal, it's just a regular zoom lens. Like, as you zoom, the focus drifts a little bit. It's part but of You are an Ampia award-winning cinematographer. Zoom it again, zoom it again. So look, the exposure changes every single time. Why yeah, is it doing that? Because it's not a T-stop lens. It's just like a regular F-stop lens. Remind me why I am paying you, you have for never this job. You paid me for one thing that we have ever done. Okay, ever. This is not working. I cannot work like this. You are not look, letting me achieve my creative brilliance. What you're asking for is like a $20,000 cinema zoom lens. So Jordan, I mean, that was just acting, of course. That's not how we actually I'm glad that you all other. saw that. Help me. <laughs> this man's a monster. It's not, it's not that bad. So why did we do that whole little stage we, piece, Jordan? We really wanted to demonstrate um, practically some of the uses of a cinema zoom lens. For sure. Uh, which are really expensive and tough to come by. And there's not a lot of options for those. I, of course, experienced videographers know the benefit of these. But I mean, myself mm -hmm. included, I mean, a lot of people come into this video world and they're going to be like, well... You know, why not just use Canon lenses exactly. or Sony lenses or yeah. whatever? I mean, why would I why buy these really expensive lenses? And it really does address these issues that we're talking about. Totally. Breathing, parfocal capability, uh, you know, the ability to aperture. T stopped apertures, right? Now, one thing you did say in the in the little skit that we did was very true, and that's that most cinema lenses are incredibly expensive. Right. You know, you think about the Zeiss, you know, super light and all this kind of stuff made for E-mount, really yeah. pricey stuff. Yeah. So, what are we doing here today? What well, are we this showing? is really interesting because Fuji was nice enough to give us their new eighteen to fifty-five. Mm. Um, this is their MK series, okay. which is kind of like their budget cinema zoom lenses. Mm. Um, but really interesting, they put it to start in a E-mount um, right. for the Sony cameras because they're so widely used at this point. Um, and honestly, the price is a hugely compelling part of this. Right. Because um, we're looking like under five grand Canadian. Which is crazy, yeah, um, compared for something to like this. Uh, it's a T29, so a very fast lens. For sure. And nice focal length. Exactly. It's yeah. the range generally I like to shoot. Now, they also have a longer lens as well, don't they? Yeah, they've got a second one going up to 135 millimeters. Okay. Still a T2.9. Uh, and Ooh. that guy's going to be shipping later. Um, but this is definitely the one I'd use for like most filmmaking, most of the kind of stuff we do. I tend not to use a lot of long glass. Um, and build quality wise, and this thing good. feels very comparable to I mean, some of that more expensive glass. You're getting all the stuff that you want. I mean, you're getting indexing marks, tooth yes. focusing rings, a long focus pull, beautiful smoothness, mm -hmm. uh, T-stopped iris, fully, uh, fully uh, variable. Yeah, and out of focus rendition is beautiful on this. Mm -hmm. So we've got all of those professional features, but it doesn't look like they skimped out on any of this stuff. You know, it's a sharp lens, things sure. like that. Okay, so the lens is very lightweight. It's very well built, but there has to be something we're missing out on at that price point. Yeah, and I mean, the major one is there is no servo out right. of the box with this. We don't even know that one is going to be coming at some point. So, of course, you could, it's properly geared, so you could hook up like a remote follow focus system to right. it uh, and use that as a servo. But uh, yeah, natively out of the box, that is the major sacrifice. That okay, we're looking so for at the viewers these. at home, of course, always manual focus with cinema glass, but also without the servo, you cannot electrically zoom. Yeah, exactly. If right. you want that smooth, constant, and zoom, you're gonna have to hook up a follow focus or something like okay, that. Okay, but still, it. very, very good for cinematic yeah. work. And there was something you did really like about this lens particularly. Yeah, there's a couple other things that are really smart. I mean, like a lot of cinema zooms, it's not a terribly close focuser, uh, right. but you do have the option to just flick the macro switch and get that close focus capability. Okay. Um, and I love that they put feet and meters on it. A lot mm. of the time when you're buying cinema lenses, you buy them in either feet or meters. Um, and this is really lovely because, you know, mid ranges, I do tend to think in meters, but for really precise measurements, when I'm like taping my focus marks or whatever, feet. I want feet. It's a more precise measurement. So now, as we were kind of joking about in our scene earlier, is this lens going to breathe? 
Uh, no, it, we checked it through all the focal lengths. It seems very well. Gotcha. Is it par focal? Is it going to maintain the same focusing point as you zoom? It absolutely is a par focal lens. You right. do have to adjust your back focus on this, but then once you do, you're good to go. And no exposure changes as you change. It's uh, exact zoom. same light levels all the way through. It's all the major benefits of the Cinema Zoom are here and accounted for. Okay, so then it really begs the question, does everybody need this lens? I mean, who is this lens for? Uh, we've got an FS7, right. maybe on an FS5, but are people going to rock these on A6300s and 6500s? Well, I mean, it is still a bigger lens. A lot of the cine zooms, that is the case. Right. Um, and, I mean, for mid-size productions, this makes a lot of sense. You know, you look at a lot of TV work, uh, a lot of higher-end commercial guys, stuff like that. FS5s, FS7s are everywhere right now, right. which is why this E-mount makes so much sense. But... You know, I'm, it's a Super 35 lens. So. Yeah, so you're not putting this on an A7S exactly. or uh, an A7R in full frame. Yeah, and like if that, they put okay. this out in a PL mount or something like that, it's not going to cover all the red sensors, things right. like that. Right. Um, so this makes a ton of sense for them to start in this mount. I am surprised, now that the Fujis are capable of good video, they didn't simultaneously throw this in an XF mount. Right, um, throw it on but, an X-T2. But looking at the lens design, it does look like this is something you could potentially change the mount on. Um, right. So hopefully that's something that we see over time. Time. But right now, I think they are making a perfectly sensible decision. This is the mount I think that this lens would sell far and away the most in. Um, so it makes the most sense to launch it that Very way. Very cool. Yeah. So now the user who wants to do commercial work or ENG work with an E-mount style camera yeah. has an affordable, very capable, optically beautiful yeah. cinematic lens. Yeah, or even like low budget short filmmaking or something like sure. that. I know when I'm doing that kind of stuff, this will speed you up. You know, just changing lenses, worrying about having them with you all the time. It'd be great to just have one setup. You're ready to go, but you're still getting all the benefits of cinema gloss. Okay, well, hopefully you, uh, you learned a lot about that, you know, and why cinema lenses are good, and uh, I'll try not to hit Jordan too much in the future, but I'm I would appreciate that. Promises. I'm very skeptical. <laughs> Don't forget, check us out on Instagram, tweet to us, subscribe to our channel, let us know if you have questions about this beautiful new product, both the 50 to 135 and 18 to 55. 18 to 55. Yeah. And uh, yeah, get affordable cinema on your email right away. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you again soon.